Our guest on this episode is making a record third appearance on the Styles cast. He's the only one to do it. Beforehand, he was tied with Ben Wells of Blackstone Cherry for two appearances each. Now he's officially the record holder for a two and three. Is he, his name is Corky G. We got him on here today to talk about Code Red Riot, the brand new single. Also, a couple other projects he has going on. Corky G joins us here on the Styles cast. Welcome aboard. <laughs> What up, sir? How are you? Good, good. Good to see you, sir. <laughs> Welcome to your third appearance on the show now. I feel like you, you just put a lot of pressure on me. I, <laughs> I didn't know that I was uh, breaking records with this appearance. This is You good. are. Third time now, man. And I want to start real quick that I am wearing one of your Delete Design shirts. Yes. That is, you- that is that by by far, that is the most popular design we have, which is funny to me because I, I remember putting that together and going, no one is ever going to order this, but I think it's funny, which is how most successful things I believe get put together is you don't believe that anyone else will actually like it. Uh, I am modeling uh, one of my other popular designs, which is, yeah, wait, I got an angle. There we go. Of all my black shirts, this one's my favorite. Um, (laughs) My wife has that in the, uh, I believe it is the uh, baseball style. Yes. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) But, uh, but yeah, it, it it's funny how um, you know your need for to revamp your wardrobe and your lack of desire to go out and search for clothing turns into you creating your own clothing line, and that's exactly <laughs> what happened. <laughs> so when you're coming up with these designs, as you said, you know you made this verse course verse shirt and just purely as like you know almost a joke, and you didn't think it was gonna work and people were gonna buy it. Here, it's your best design. When you're thinking of these designs, what goes into it? Do you just sit around and go, oh, this would be a great shirt? I, I, I do have a list uh, of, of things that I thought would be funny or interesting, and uh, I just started making them. And, and honestly, it was like, it was like, I, <laughs> I need shirts. Uh, you know, at a certain point in time, like, like my wife's like, all of your shirts are falling apart. They're all from <laughs> like three years ago. Like, dude, seriously. <laughs> And, and I'm sitting there going like, well, you know what I, sh- I should do? If I'm going to get more shirts, I should get more shirts that I can wear around but also wear on stage. And I'm like, well, I like people wearing shirts on stage that have like quotes on them or funny stuff or whatever. So what would I wear on stage that I would think is funny? And then I just started coming up with ideas. And, and funny enough, like I didn't even realize that the print to order thing was as big as it is I, or like that it's as as open of an option as it is like i i'd known a few sites in the past and i think it had been i mean it's been several years since i looked into it Mm -hmm. and i got into it by seeing an instagram ad and clicking on it and buying this dude's shirt that same thing i thought it was funny and as i'm buying it i click on it and it says uh congratulations you just paid an independent artist with your purchase and i'm like wait what 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 do you mean And, and i'm like clicking through and i'm like Oh, this entire site is independent artists, and I was like, "Well, <laughs> I can do that," it, it, you know. And it was like, like, ding, right. ding, ding, ding. and then and it's that whole thing of like, uh, we're in a pandemic, and I'm not going to work to play drums, so I have extra hours on my hands. So hey, you, you know, like like all the like all the wheels are start spinning. And the next thing you know, like I'm just developing designs and throwing them up and and seeing what people like and and. Uh, I've gotten a few taken down. Um, a few taken down. A few taken down. That, that was that was fun. Um, certain things like I, I made an, an autocorrect shirt, and it wasn't the autocorrect uh, portion. It wasn't that there was the the profanity or or loose almost profanity. Uh, it's it's probably way down at the bottom. Is one of the first ones I did. There it is, yeah. dear autocorrect. You can duck and go to go to heel. You piece of shut. And below it, I had the RIAA uh, ex- uh, Parental Advisory Explicit Lyrics logo. Oh, because of uh, that which, logo. And I, I, I swear, I thought that that logo was uh, a, a public domain, and it is not public. <laughs> it is not public domain. It is very much. It was found by the RIAA, and I had to remove the uh, the logo. Yeah, I did not know that either. Well, there you go. They say you learn something new every day. Kids you know. <laughs> 
Right. There's a lot of things I've learned in 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 both this this apparel process and the art process, and, and there's it, as they say, uh, you don't know what you don't know, and <laughs> I did not know many things. So they, they, <laughs> there you go. But but you know, Con Man has been totally fine. Uh, I, I did the Four Seasons Total Landscaping one. Uh, that one's been totally fine. Uh, uh, the No Malarkey uh, Biden one. That one's been been fine. You know, so yeah, who knows? You got a lot of good ones up there. I mean, a lot of things to pay. You, you can. I love the Jack White, Jack Black, <laughs> Jack Knight. <laughs> yeah. There's Is so it, many good ones. I, yeah. my, my kid, my kid laughs hysterically at the no regrets one. He no loves, regrets, yeah, yeah. No regrets, yes. <laughs> He's like, oh, I need that one. I'm like, all right, next order we put in. See, it's uh, it's the same thing. And and then the funny part is that at a certain point, like I just get, I get backlogged with ideas, and then and then I'll I'll get them all put together and put a bunch up at the same time, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like like uh, I was saying before. See, I've been diversifying a lot through the pandemic, but Corky's Fitness on there, that is not my Corky's Fitness. I'm not going into the fitness genre. You mean that you're is, not doing fitness training on the side? That oh. is my dad. My dad is a specialized <laughs> fitness trainer because he's, you know, in his late 60s and uh, people that want a personal trainer of that age, there's very few personal tra trainers available. Uh, and so he's kind of got, got this rare niche. So he trains like, he's like, you know, world champion, you know, older school wrestlers and that kind of thing. Um, and, and so he's like, he's like, Hey Cork, I need, I need a, a, a logo and maybe I can order some like, you know, notebooks or shirts and that kind of stuff. And I was like, I got you. So I put it up there, but now I'm like, I'm like, Oh yeah, people are going to think that I'm doing Cork. <laughs> so I have the same name. I'm just that, imagining you helping people out with like doing yoga and stuff. <laughs> and totally. Corky G yoga. <laughs> But my dad's cool. He's pretty. He's hardcore on on whatever he focuses on, and and he's been doing the personal training thing for for years now. Um, he was doing it was kind of like once he retired, he got into bodybuilding, and then when his body kind of couldn't keep up with that regimen and and all the there's so much going into that, it was like it was like well, I like to work out and I like to help people, so it turned into a fitness thing for him. Now and is then, your dad uh, like buff, like super duper buff, or is he just like mostly maintained? He's, type of he's always been at least you know maintained, but he, he there was a while he was very very buff. Um, he's he's a you know a very fit guy. What did he do before he retired? Construction for like thirty or thirty five years or some some oh, wow. crazy thing like that. So he was he was uh, he, when we when I was growing up in in Washington, he worked on. Um, like uh, the Microsoft buildings there for years. We worked on the AT and T buildings there for years. That that kind of stuff, like large scale, large scale construction projects. So he was always active. And uh, like when I was BMX racing, he was BMX racing too because he's like, well, I could sit here or I could BMX race also. So I'm just gonna race. You know? <laughs> Would you say you got your work ethic from him then? Yeah, yeah. It, it, he's it, it. He's always very. Both of my parents are always very, very focused. But my dad is. I would call my dad intense, and so that intensity definitely comes from him. <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine then, man. Well, uh, congratulations on the success so far on Delete Designs. It's really awesome. I love when you put the shirts out. I know we, my wife and I went through, we were like, all right, which ones do we want? I think we, <laughs> you put the site up. <laughs> yeah, and, and, I, and I mean, really, like, um, it's so tough, like, when – it's like one of those things where it's like, do you want to focus on one thing it, or do you want to focus on a lot of things? And I've always been one of those guys that's focused on a lot of different projects. So mm -hmm. uh, it's like I, I dig deep into it and I go out for a little bit. But like I really want Delete Designs to be like a rock and roll apparel destination. Like like I'm looking to, like I say, create stuff that, that I would like to wear. Same as like when you're doing band merch. The lesson was always like if you're going to create merch for your band, make sure it's stuff that you actually want to wear because – it, it's a reflection of you right so mm -hmm. um you know I, I want it to be that hub that like people that like rock music and and like rock and roll in that style like to be able to buy shirts from from that place so do i foresee you know whenever the day comes that we can all get back to show as you take code red riot out on tour do i see a code red riot merch table and then a delete designs table that would be i that would be ideal that'd be <laughs> definitely a goal <laughs> be a lot of fun <laughs> But, you know, I mean, and like, you know, Jacoby did it. I, I felt like he did it really, really well with Lovers or Lunatics. And that was that was one of the things that got me going on this, too, was like and, and 
if you look at the the Code Red Riot videos from a couple years ago, I'm pretty sure in in most or all the videos I'm wearing a Lovers or Lunatics shirt. Like same thing. I liked the style. I honed in on the fact that they were creating stuff that was specific for me, and uh, and and so I bought a bunch of stuff off that site and loved it and wore the heck out of it. And so I was like. You don't think that you can do something similar, and then one day you go, ah, I'm just going to give it a shot. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and here you are diversifying. I have a friend of mine who uh, was in a documentary called The Hustle is Real. Um, it's more about that that particular documentary is about being a DJ, like uh-huh. one who plays the turntables and stuff, and the hustling to get the to get every gig, so hustling to get every single dollar. But the general consensus, the hustle is real in your case. I mean, you're proving it every day with all the projects you got going on. Yeah, yeah, and and it really goes back to like if you're gonna do something, if you're gonna spend your time on something, do things that you enjoy, do things that you like, because mm-hmm. that'll you'll want to do it more, and it'll make the product better, and you you're putting more care into the project and all that kind of stuff. Like, I'm you know I'm not just throwing up designs on the shirt thing. I'm not just doing art and throwing it like i'm i'm genuinely i love doing it and so i'm making it absolutely the best that i can do and you know presenting that product accordingly like if you're going to do it do it do it because you enjoy it and do it right you know as best as you can now have you ever like designed something and then it was like oh man this is great but then you go back like a day later you go oh my god what was that what was i thinking there that's that's the life of of any creative absolutely absolutely (laughs) that that it it's to me, it's more obvious with music stuff. Like when you okay. write a really great lyric, and you go back the next day, and you're like, "That uh, actually, it's. I think I got to change that." <laughs> 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 um, I, I I think w- like with music, the like the emotion of one day changes a lot from from day to day. So the the goal always with music is is to be able to go back to it the next day and still like it. Then you know that you feel like you're onto something. Right. Uh, whereas with the art stuff, like, uh, there's more. I feel like there's more time that that it takes to develop it, and you're and you're judging it as you're developing it. So by the time you're done, you're like, yeah, that's pretty good, you know, and, and you hope for the best. But, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, with music, man, all all the time. That's that's why, like, I mean, some of my most successful songs I've written six or seven choruses for, or it, it, yeah, I mean, it it the. Mm-hmm. Like, I had one song that was placed into a movie, and this was this was like 15 years ago, and it was by far the hardest song I'd ever had to write. And it sounds simple, and it's a nice, easy song, or whatever. But it was not simple to write, and I almost threw it away so many times. And I almost did the like, well, the chorus is good enough. I know it's not great, but it's good enough. And then I would go back and write another chorus. And then finally, I was like, that's a great chorus. And then, as it turned out, years later, that song got placed and in, in was. I mean, I made money as a musician off of a song, and and it was, it goes back to like, well, I worked my ass off and mm-hmm. didn't stop till I was, a hundred percent happy with this thing. So, um, you know, but but each time I was as I'm writing it, I'm like, this is great. This is gonna be the great chorus. <laughs> Done. You know. Well, speaking of new music, you know, music, you do have a new track coming out today. Yes. Called No Accident. So let's talk about this because now before we do that though. The last time you and I talked on this on the Styles cast, you were teeing up a cover that was coming down the pike. It ended up yes. being Jump Around. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful job on that one, man. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thoroughly enjoyed that cover. Also, the video was fantastic. What went into doing that video with all the uh, the animal clips? Well, uh, the it, it went into uh, uh, the, the thing that sparks uh, many... Uh, Many inspirational creative ideas, no budget. No budget turned <laughs> into uh, what could I do that I think is funny and interesting, and then it turned into, I bet there's a bunch of videos of uh, cat and dog fails that I've seen. I, I bet I can compile a bunch of them. The next thing you know, like I had a whole video. I basically, I mean, honestly, like a lot of times videos will take, like the shortest it'll take is like a week to do. Oh, wow. Uh, it, when, I'm, when I'm filming and editing from scratch, I mean, like the Bulletproof video that I did, that took... I think it was a month or six weeks to do because I was also like learning the software at that point in time. But it's like a very oh. intensive video is not easy for anyone that doesn't do video. It is there's a steep learning curve there, and I love it, but it whew, it's tough. <laughs> 
So with the jump around video, I was like, look, I'm going to give myself one night, maybe two, and I'm just going to see if I can put a video together. <laughs> Same thing. I think it'll be funny. It'll be good. But but jump around was a lot of fun because like that was, I think as we were talking about before, like uh, when I'd finished the first Code Red Riot record and went back to Vegas, I was like, I was like, okay, I got some songs here, but I need something that really is exciting that'll get me back into recording again and and let me just kind of re like get my feet wet and so i was like let me do a cover i don't know i'll do jump around and i just started recording it and like getting into that song in particular is what got me back into writing all of these and recording all these songs that are coming out now so um so it's fun to finally get that out there and and uh you know it's is a fun cover to do for sure well, no accidents out now today. So let's talk about this song because this is your newest one, and it's a lot of fun. And I love the groove in it, man. I mean, this this, this is a great track. And every time I went back and listened to it, I'm like, that groove line in there, man. I'm like, I really dig this thing because you. When we talked about it way beforehand, you were like, it's got like a little Red Hot Chili Peppers, Rage Against the Machine feel. Like, there's a lot of vibes in this track. Talk to yeah. me about it. Well, it, funny enough, no accident. Uh, is the only song that I can remember that I wrote the lyrics first. And I came up with the idea, I kind of had the cadence down and I just wrote down the lyrics really, really quickly because they, they'd come in my head. I was like backstage at a Blue Man show. And like, it was one of the things where like, your mind starts wandering and the next thing you know, like something kind of pops into your head. And then, and then when the idea comes, like it, for me, it'll come really, really quickly and just boom, 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 wrote down the lyrics. And I'm like, well, what, what am I going to do for that? You know, musically, I don't, I, you know, I've not, written the song that way before so um i knew what kind of vibe i was hoping to do and just started kind of messing around i had i had a tempo and words and that was basically it um so that's kind of what like the lyrics led me down that whole rage against the machine red hot chili peppers type vibe and uh you know i was thought the chorus was like i wanted it to be quick and simple and easy so that that's where i all all First and foremost, always go back to a Nirvana or Green Day reference on that front. Would they? You know, they're like two of my favorite bands, and always keeping things simple. So, um, but yeah, well, I I had finished the song, and there's this bass player in Vegas, uh, a guy named Michael Ersic, who's a good friend of mine, and 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 he's always been a great sounding board with Code Red Riot, and he's he's played uh, Code Red Riot gigs with me uh, in Vegas, and he's one of my favorite bass players, and he goes. He goes, hey man, uh, I know your song is done, and the song was done. It was mixed, like everything is done. He said, I know your song's done, but I got this idea for a bass line. I'm just gonna record it and send it over, and let me know what you think. And the dude put this like flea slapping crazy line, like I mean, you don't hear it in rock anymore. You don't hear a bass line like that anymore. And I was like. I was like, dude, the song was done. And he's like, I know. And I was like, all right, come over to my house. <laughs> come over to my house. <laughs> and so we just had a night of just goofing around and, and you know, refining this idea with that. And I was, like, I was like, we just totally turned the song into something completely different. And it went from like what I thought, what I thought was a really good song. I was like, now I... I wasn't intending on putting it out at this point in time, but I was like, I was like, th this is the next. I'm putting this out immediately. So you know, here we are today. So we're here today. How long ago was it finished? Uh, I I mean it, it was written and finished like, I mean a lot of these songs very early in the pandemic, mm -hmm. and and then I was like trying to figure out when it would be reasonable a reasonable time to release stuff. And like all the right like every band right now oh it was not a good time you know it's no right, you know. then eventually you're like well i'm gonna just start releasing stuff so um so it was done and it was in line to to get released at some point in time and then uh he he was over here i mean not more than a month or two ago to do that oh, wow. and like and once it was, once that was on there i was like i was like dude this thing it literally has been sitting there finished for like six months and i was like well <laughs> I'll just fix it with this bass line, and then we'll, <laughs> we'll put it out. <laughs> but it's yeah, amazing I, I, how you know music can come together like that. You know, yeah, but it's done, it's ready, it's great, it's a perfect song. Oh, maybe not. Yeah. Okay, well, here we go. All right. Yeah, we'll uh, that was like the bonus of not putting it out. Was like if I had put it out earlier, it would have never gotten that bass. And dude, that bass line is one of my favorite parts of the song. So I, I, I love it. And 
But like, I mean, I just watched like Dave Grohl get, doing an interview about the Foo Fighters record that just came out. I, I think he said that was that was supposed to come out eight or nine months ago, mm-hmm. and then they and then the pandemic happened, and they were like, you know, okay, I guess we're delaying it. And then eventually they were like, well, we've delayed it for nine months. Can we just put this thing out and just <laughs> get it out there now? <laughs> The temptation, to, and I know he said they didn't tweak it or play with it, but the temptation, though, to go back, sitting on that for like nine months and go, well, I've got some new ideas with this <laughs> song. Do we yeah. go back? And... Some, sometimes there's that. There's With me, like, quite honestly, like, when I finish, and, and I, it might be different with me because I do the production and the mixing and stuff myself, but, mm-hmm. like, when I, when I finish it and come to that day where I'm I'm done with it, I I don't even listen to it. Yeah, like it's it's done. <laughs> because if I if I listen to it, then I might come up with something else that I feel like I need to do. But I'm like I'm like, look, I put all these hours into it. It's done. It feels complete. I went back to it. Same thing. I went back to it the next day and it still felt complete. I'm done. And then it's just now it's ready for people to hear. And uh, I don't give myself that option. The only reason I had that option is because Mike made me do it. <laughs> <laughs> Mike's fault. It's Mike's, yeah. fault. <laughs> it's Mike's fault we have this new version. Now, the old version, do you still have the older, quote unquote, original version? Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and really all that's different is the baseline. But, like, okay. uh, you know, to the baseline was uh, it was what I felt uh, Tom would have played on a Rage track because there's you know, some funny, like, very super high guitar stuff going on, with, like, through the same pedal that, like, Tom Morello uses in this song, and that kind of stuff. So, uh, I was definitely, like, in that rage headspace. I'm like, I'm like what would he do? And it, I always liked what I did with it. It was a it was a unique enough bass line. But, like, Mike came in with his flea approach, and I was like, all right, flea wins. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. We're good. We're yeah. good. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's awesome, man. The track is out now. It's out there across all the entire, uh, every streaming platform. I assume, yes. then, right? All, all the all the digital platforms. I don't, I don't uncheck any of the boxes, so it should be pretty much anywhere and everywhere that uh, on digital outlets these days. Well, you got this out now, so of course this is the third original that you've released in what, like an eight month span at this point. Yeah, the the first Something one I put like out, uh, Weapon, came out in August, so right. we're, okay. we're a few months, just six months in, maybe. Okay, around that, do you have plans now for upcoming releases past this one? Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, my goal kind of through the whole thing was uh, to, to have something coming out every five or six weeks. Okay. Uh, and uh, the old Spotify rounds. The, the old Spotify rounds, exactly. And um, the only reason there was a stretch between Jump Around and this, Jump Around came out Halloween, mm-hmm. uh, basically, uh, is that I got sidetracked. That This is... Jump Around came out, and I was digging deep into the clothing design thing, and and uh, some bands called me up to record them. So I've been doing some studio sessions with other Vegas bands, um, some other drumming projects, all that kind of stuff. So it was like, next thing I knew, I got swamped with all these other ideas, and and the art thing was coming up at the. I mean, like, it was like all these things started coming together, and I was like, all this focus, and I just was like, I was like, if I'm not focused on the recording of my own songs, I'm not gonna finish a mix tonight i'm just gonna wait till i have time to focus on it again and then i'll finish mixes so um so the next one's finished that one's ready to go uh the one after that i'm working on right now so i'm trying to be ahead of the game more than i was uh before but it's you know it when you're an individual diversifying sometimes it's hard to keep, you, you, <laughs> and you're, but, you're the only one running the corky g empire yes so. yes <laughs> and, and you come up with a plan and the best thing about these things is plans can always change and hey, here we you know plans yeah, change no big, no big deal there's, <laughs> there's no there's no marketing ahead. department and and you know a and r department you know begging me to it's, it's just like i'm releasing music that i like when i like to do it you know, when when I give the the checkmark seal of approval, I'm like, this is I, I like this. I hope other people do, but I'm I'm good with it. Let's put it out there. You know, we'll do it when we when we when we want it. You mentioned the art stuff. I see some of it in the back there, and you yes. are 
you're working on this now. How did you get into this whole thing? Because I know this has been going for a bit now since the pandemic started, but how did you uh, kind of fall into this, if you will? I I was trying to figure that out, and I genuinely don't remember. What, <laughs> I don't remember what the trigger was. Um, the shirt the shirt thing, I remember very specifically what triggered, what triggered that. Okay. But the art thing, like I mean, you know, like back when I was in Otherwise, I was drawing on drum heads and right. I, I was doing art for that. Um, and that continued through Coded Right. And the drum head thing is is really fun and a really cool thing to do. But what I learned about it is is uh, if I'm not sitting at a merch table after a show, uh, that that's really when the drum head thing is, is uh, uh, something that people want to buy because they want something unique from that show that they just experienced. And... Mm -hmm. When I was drawing them at home, it just like the, you know, the audience wasn't there for that. So I just kind of, that fell off the map a bit. Um, but painting, like, it, it's just one of those things, I, God, I feel like, I mean, I'm realizing more and more people paint that are creatives just because it's something that they enjoy to do, right? Whether it's like Jim Carrey or like Tim from Primus, like, I mean, like, all these guys that I never knew painted, like just do it on the side because they like to do it. And so, yeah. and so I was like, well, you know, this, this looks like fun and, and started to, and I, I got for the life of me, I have no idea what triggered it, but, <laughs> um, but what got it going was like, I was like, I, I think I'm, I'm kind of perfecting what I'm doing a little bit. I'm getting better at it. I'm doing some research. And, uh, my younger kid who's, who's, uh, 10, just turned 11. She was like, I want to, I want to do paintings for everybody for Christmas. Cause you know, when like, it's like, I don't have any money, but I can do paintings. And I was like, hell yeah, you can do paintings. Like let's do, <laughs> let's do paintings. Yeah. And, uh, and so we did, and it was a really cool experience to, you know, kind of show her the process and, and, uh, and she loved it. Everybody was like super psyched with the paintings that she was able to come up with. And, uh, and then, so then next thing I know, like I'm getting orders and I was like, Oh, well, I, I can keep painting, you know, <laughs> you know like, and it just kind of like stumbles down, down that road. Um, but it's a really cool and fun art form. And, and, you know, I've, I've never been one that, that really focused on detailed drawings or that kind of thing. I've always enjoyed abstract art. I always like, like even, even in my old bike race days, I have, and I, and for the life of me, I wish I kept one of these bikes, but like, uh, I would go into races, I would strip the paint and I would splatter paint the bike that I was racing with and do like these custom paint jobs just because it was fun to do. Um, so it's just, it's just carried over into something that like, that I like to like, and it's funny cause I'm starting to run out of space of like where to hang these things. Right. But, oh, like, geez. Um, and, yeah, I, and I mean, they're, they're your, yours though. The, the, see, there's a blank spot right there. <laughs> that yeah. that that's the West Styles painting that that literally just is getting sorted out. Uh, it should go in the mail tomorrow. Oh, uh, if I get it, 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 it's not in the box yet, but it's it, but it's but it's uh, it's all getting sorted out. So so uh, the best thing is creating space on the wall so I can put the new ones you know up and you know that keep cycling it through. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, the, the artwork is totally amazing. I'm going to pull one up here for those watching the uh, the video version of this. I mean, it's really cool. So you basically put the paint down and kind of spin it while it goes out. But how do you really get it to start from the beginning? Like, is there a layer of paint that goes down? Yeah, I mean, there's a million different techniques. And, and part of, like, what's been fun is, is like, I'm, I'm posting stuff. Like, I think that one that right there that, that you're showing is from... If it's not from November, it might be from December, right? So like, like, it's it's another one of those things where like I did a ton and then and really focused on it and then and paid no social media attention to it whatsoever. So I'm going through a lot of them and posting them now. Mm -hmm. um, that one in particular is I put some paint down in the center and then I put like the bottom of a of a soda bottle on top of it and poured the paint on top of the soda bottle so it would spread mm -hmm. out. Uh, then take like you know a popsicle stick or whatever and start shooting the little daggers that are out there and then spinning it so there's it's just a lot of ways of like manipulating the paint and then sorting it out so like i've spun a handful of them but but uh i really if i want to spin a bunch i need to create a, a nice little uh place to do that kind of stuff because like uh <laughs> in my experimental stage like i did this one uh the the paint 
the paint splatter barrier was uh, merch bins and cardboard uh, taped on the floor. <laughs> and, uh, and, and I mean, it was like, look, I was able to, to, to do it, but it was like, it was also like, I'm going to do this really fast just to see if I like it and can pull it off. Um, and, but there's other ones where like you, you pour, a, pour a bunch of paint in the cup and then you can pour it all together. You can put it, uh, you know, splatter it all over the canvas. <laughs> um, yeah, that, see that. So now I'm putting the, the little daggers in, a little, mm -hmm. and then I'll get ready to spin it there in that video. Yeah, this is also is. where I learned it was easier on this particular, very very cheap lazy Susan that to use two hands for the spin, not just one. <laughs> uh, but it, it's just, it, it's just a bunch of little tricks like that. So it, it's it's been fun, and this was the first one I did where like you can see me like messing up and the lazy Susan all over the place. I'm trying to spin it with just one hand, and then this you know this doesn't work. <laughs> And then I'm gonna put the paint on uh, uh, in a way that is terrible in a second. This is where it'll go. It'll go outwards mm -hmm. uh, right before I'm gonna spin outwards. So all it does is just make it look sloppy and messy. That that I was like that sucks. <laughs> that is terrible. And I'm like spinning it again, going maybe this will make it better. I'm like no no no. <laughs> all literally. So now at this point in time, the painting is completely a bust until I completely cover it up again. Because I was like I was like. I was almost there, and instead, of, so now I'm mixing paint. Now I'm going to put on paint again and then spin it, and then I'm like, "That rules." Okay, now we're done. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that is too funny. Yeah, so and you can, my 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 kid is popping her head in because that because that was what she wanted to do. She wanted to do some spin art, and so I was kind of mm -hmm. I was like, look, you're going to you're gonna do these, but let let Dad test it first because I, I can screw up as many times as I want, and I totally don't care. Like, let's mm -hmm. just figure it out first. And then so she's in there going like, maybe try this, maybe try this. I'm like, I don't know what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> so do you do that in your garage, I assume, then, with yeah. all the workmen's? Because I yes. can only imagine your wife's like, mm -mm. <laughs> not in the yeah. house. Yeah, and, and uh, the best part about all that was like, we I had those blue tarps taped down for well, I think probably six weeks out there while I was doing a bunch of stuff. And uh, by the end, it was just covered in <laughs> spilled paint. So, uh, so right after the new year, I, I, I took it off and I'm like, I'm like, look, it's, you know, I covered up the garage. It's going to be great. And dude, that paint had soaked through those tarps all over the place. So my garage is now just multicolored mess. all sorts of paint on the ground. So like now I've, I got to, I, I think I have like some goo gone. It's like paint remover and whatnot. I got to go in there and scrub the garage floor. For, for all, yeah. So good luck with that. So, so. So the next batch of videos that I watched were all about how to cleanly do this part of artwork. So I now do it on a table. The table is covered with, you know, uh, like uh, plastic. Right. Uh, I have the, the, the canvases set above the plastic. So, you know, and, then, and it drips on to like basically like a, a doggy uh, pee pad that you can throw away after, you know, all this kind of stuff. I've been doing it. The last ones that I've done uh, are totally. I haven't made any mess whatsoever. Um, That's a I, huge step right there. Then. <laughs> yeah, but it was like I spent hours on YouTube going like, "Oh, I like that. I like that. I like that." And this is this is how I can keep doing the art and not have my wife completely yell at me for what I'm doing to the house. So <laughs> again, again, you don't know what you don't know, and <laughs> I I was learning how to paint, but I was not learning how to do it cleanly. <laughs> Now, did you tell your wife that, that that whole line, and did she buy into it? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I can only uh, imagine me trying to pull that in my wife. She's like, I don't care. Clean it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I mean, but uh, this all stemmed from in, in uh, the Code Red Riot Living Low video where we're throwing paint all over the place, which was which is another great idea of mine. I had this great idea, and I was like, I was like, look, I got these drums that I don't care about. I can get the, you know, and I, I took an old guitar and I sanded it down and repainted it so we could we could get paint all over this crappy guitar and all that kind of stuff. So we, we and I even like, I, I remember like I bought a, a bass from a friend that uh, didn't have any electronics in it. It was it was basically just like a body and a neck. That I was, I was like, mm -hmm. it doesn't even need to play. I just need a bass with strings on it and, and great. And, uh, you know, so the video is shot. We, we go back, there's paint all over us. But like, we're like, well, you know, we don't want to throw it away. So then I get it back to Vegas, and then and then like a year later, I'm like, I still have this drum set here, and I still have paint all over these drums. Like, uh, I guess I should try to figure out how to get paint off things. I don't. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
and uh, it 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 did take a few hours, but I, uh, but I got I did restore the kit and get all the paint off of it, so that was nice. But well, there but, you uh, go. At least you, you still have it. How many drum sets do you have? Well, uh, one of the things that the pandemic has been beneficial for is getting rid of things that I don't need, and one of them was <laughs> a lot of drum kits. So, uh, ironically, that that drum kit uh, from that particular video I also used during my otherwise time, uh, God, probably 2013. Okay. And uh, my old drum tech that was teching for us at that point in time was like, he's like, dude, you're selling the kit that I teched, right? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, I want to buy that kit. I want to keep that kit closed. And I was like, all right, cool. So, so I, I ended up actually selling a lot of the kits. Uh, over the pandemic that I wasn't using and uh, mm -hmm. bought a couple that I that were really nice kits that I've always wanted to get. So I was like, I was like, let me get rid of my, you know, essentially touring kits, which people typically don't take on tour. They're the their best and most expensive kits. They want to take on kit on tour kits that can get beat up or, you know, I, a, a bass player drop a kick drum and break it. One, you know, like things happen on the road so anyway right. so i got rid of a lot of those kits um that essentially i just wasn't using and then bought ones that i thought would be really great to have over time so that that was a project and on a, this dw kit behind me is is uh, by far the most expensive kit that i've ever uh purchased but it's also you know the best kit i've ever purchased so hey i've been drumming for a long time and <laughs> yeah, it's a good kit <laughs> Got to upgrade, right? Every yeah. you know, when it's time, you can finally buy one and do it. <laughs> yeah, and and but it was funny because like, it was like I think uh, it was three or four kits combined uh, added up to this one kit. But 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 see, that was always also reasonable to the wife was if I pay for it by selling things that we, you know, and, and create right. space in the garage, then this is, oh, this is a win-win for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. What, uh, what other gear have you gotten rid of? You talked about all the drums. Like, do you have other stuff that you got rid of in the time? Uh, or? Yeah. I mean, guitar players kill me for this, but I, I got, when I first moved to Vegas, one of the first things I, and this is in 2001 was I started a band with other, uh, blue man musicians and I was the rhythm guitar player and, and co-frontman of this band so i've had this marshall jcm 800 which you know is the angus young amp and every guitar player that apparently wants one and i didn't know this i just was like i i yeah. i came in going i want a marshall and i got a mar i bought it off ebay and you know great and, and uh I've been having guitar players asking me if you know you sell that Marshall yet for like years, and and I finally got rid of it, uh, <laughs> thankfully to another guy in in town that like he's a great guitar player, uh, in a band called Mercy Music that's in Vegas, and and I was like, well, I wasn't looking to sell this thing, but but I also don't have any real use for this, and if it goes to someone, it should go to someone that gonna use is it, gonna yeah. use it, and you know, and and they're always recording and always working hard, and I I love. I love Brendan. I love that band. So I was like, I was like, dude, yeah, I'll sell it to you. But then, of course, as soon as word got out that I sold it, I got up on his guitar players going, like, dude, you sold the Marshall. Like, you, oh, I said whenever you're going to sell the Marshall, you're supposed to call me. You know, I was like, oh, <laughs> sorry. It came yes. up in conversation, and I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't it's know. It's yours. Take it. Yeah. Get rid of it. <laughs> totally. Totally. The, the less time my wife has to bitch and moan about things that I've got, get it out of here. Well, the, the thing is, like, it's like, Dude, my wife is like the most patient person ever. I there's so much of this house that's covered in music gear, you know, or now art canvases or whatever. And I mean, she might every once in a while go like, "You think you've, you've got a lot of drums in the garage?" This is about all she says. She's just like, like, hey, you know, you know, every time like, you guys go, hey, you know those drums over there? You know, do we really need to take those with us? Or that's the, and 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 honestly, like we we moved uh, last July. Is either June or July? You know, right, right in the middle. It was right at the point where everybody realized the pandemic wasn't going to be over in a month or two. It was like, oh, this actually might last for a while. And so then the next thing we did was we moved. And then as you're move, as you're loading into the truck, <laughs> drum after drum after drum, and, and again, and and this Marshall half stack, and this you know Fender amp here, and this uh, you know, and 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 hardware stand after hardware stand, and then and then like my boxes of Code Red Riot merch, and then. It, and you know, and 
and like it's like we're doing this many truckloads and and half of what we're sending to move is like couches and clothing and stuff and then an entire other truckload is Corky's music crap it's just like <laughs> it's like you, you, you know what like uh, if I again if I'm not working and going to play drums every night maybe I should get rid of the stuff that I don't actually use and so yeah and, and I'm still I, I feel like I'm kind of through it and kind of not through it. I go out to the garage and I'm like, oh my god! Like I still, I I've sold, I think it was four or five kits that I've sold, and I still have. Well, no, I have sold every kit that I'm willing to sell, but there might be one other, you know, that that kind of thing. Right. Um, and once I got through the bulk of the music gear, then I started on my old BMX gear, because I still have a bunch of BMX stuff from when I raced in the '80s and '90s. A lot of that I never got rid of, and now it's vintage and worth like f- apparently five times more than what we paid for it back in the day, or what you know, whatever. <laughs> so, so I was like, well, I mean, I, I, I'm not going to go to the BMX track anytime soon. I guess it's time to sell some BMX stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so it's 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 been fun. So it it it's all things of uh, like I have to keep busy and I have to keep my mind focused on, you know, something mm-hmm. going. So. If I'm not designing a shirt, if I'm not painting, then I might, you know, dude, I should probably get rid of this. Maybe I should look into this. I should be recording this. Oh, geez, I guess I should finish up this Code Red Riot song. Let me layer this harmony on and finish this mix and get this thing out there, you know. Oh, man, I need to do a lyric video for this. Let me get a lyric video. Put the, you know, like, right. it's you still uh, have uh, What's-His-Face Mike or whatever come over and give a bass line again. It, you, you never know. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> And I can attest to the whole moving thing. I we've moved twice now since my wife and I have gotten together three times actually. Moving in together twice past that, there's still many things that are the bane of her existence on the other side of this camera. That <laughs> um, every time we move, she's like, "What about this? What about that?" Yeah, yeah. Have you gone through that? You did? Did you really go through it, or are you just telling me you did? You got you sort of got rid of things. Yeah. yeah. She loves me dearly, and she wouldn't really want me to get rid of things I don't want to get rid of. But still, she's like. Do you see how much stuff that we have that are is like you that is yours that we're moving for what reason? <laughs> yes, I I have I have many many of the thankfully like like this this room that I'm in now uh, is actually like this house had a second master and I was able to turn this into my studio and, and nice. my, but it's like it's by far the biggest. Normally I'm in the smallest room in the house and so you're just kind of all crammed in there. But like now I got I have space for it. So everything's comfortable in here, which is great. But like I dude I've moved. Me and my wife have been together a long time, and we've moved one, I mean, eight to ten times. It, it, it's absurd. And, and we have moved the same quirky boxes every <laughs> one of those times. Um, yeah, so it, it, she, she's a very patient woman. <laughs> and, uh, and she'll mention things, and, and it, it, it'll only have a, a tiny, tiny level of, of, of judgment and of the like. Mm. A little snark, a little sarcasm. You, you, you no. might want to get, but but you know, I love you, and it's okay. And <laughs> you know, if you can find a spot for it, great. You know, right. kind of as long as I can still get around the house and get to what I need to, and live comfortably, and don't feel like I'm. <laughs> yeah, <I laughs> totally, totally. <laughs> totally. <laughs> so, oh man, see, so- I feel like that's just the life of a musician, life of a creative. And, and I mean, the more projects I create, the worse it gets. But you know, and uh, at least I mean, hey, she likes the art. <laughs> this one this one here this this big one this is like a two foot by three foot canvas oh, uh which is the biggest so that's going in her office which is great i'm waiting for the frame mm-hmm. uh to show up i think tomorrow or the next day but but uh you know she enjoys it that's good daddy's got to pick certain activities that he likes and the wife can enjoy so that's that's all the old pick your battles and keep the wife happy happy life man yeah exactly <laughs> So where can everybody find you at? Because I know that the other day on, on Facebook, you posted, you're like, I got all these projects and this is where you can find everything because I got to prioritize it. Yeah. And honestly, like part of it is like, uh, I, I, you know, I'm still most known for drumming and, you know, kind of for Code Red Riot is what it feels like. So, so um, when I post things about drumming, it gets more of a response on my main page than my painting or you know or the clothing or that kind of stuff, which is totally fine. But what what it means is like I don't want to 
like I, I made a mistake years ago where like, my YouTube page was picking up steam. I had a bunch of drumming videos put on there and and I was getting a ton of views and this is great. And I don't think at the time it was as easy to have multiple channels on YouTube uh, or I didn't know about it or however it was, but like the next no. thing I know, like I'm posting videos of my kids doing gymnastics uh. on my same page because that was what was important to me at the time and, and that was what we were doing and I was filming it so we could archive their gymnastics competitions. And then all of a sudden, within a few months, I post a drumming video and nobody's watching it because I lost my audience. Right. right? Why is he posting things of his kids? I don't want to see this. And, and I, I get that from, from the viewer's perspective. But but at the time, like I didn't I literally didn't know how didn't feel like, well, I got to create a new, you know, email. And right. This, channel. Like, like I'm like, I just I, you know, I'm busy. I just want to upload stuff. And who cares? Who cares? And it was in retrospect, it was a really unfortunately bad choice that that what are you going to do about it now but at the same point in time it like if you're focusing on a new project i i feel like you got to start separating those projects so the people that want to see the apparel can go to the can see the apparel posts mm -hmm. people that want the art things and they're not bombarded with that when they're just like dude can you just just talk about like drumming and <laughs> and some music and and i shut up about all this other stuff so it, it's it's tough because you're posting in all these different pages, but but I think in the long run, I, given my experience on on my negative YouTube thing mistake, that hopefully this is is better in the long run. And and funny, I mean, I have other projects that are loosely in the works too, which will require another different page, I and mean, you know all that kind of stuff. So <laughs> so it's just like I might as well pull the trigger at some point in time and just and just you know have my separate projects in separate spaces and, and people that want to to stay along for that aspect of what i'm doing great and if you don't you know great that's you know that way i'm not bombarding you with stuff that you don't want to see so it's 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 tough when you're trying to do five different things at once but you know we we, we do our best <laughs> right so you got corky g which is the main one to follow you by yep code red riot for the band delete yeah. designs yeah, for the apparel. Business t-shirt company. And then Corky G Art for the stuff that we've been talking about with your cool splash art that you've been doing, the spin art. Yes, indeed. Yes, All indeed. Right. That, and, is, that, is the current, that is the current list. <laughs> <laughs> and so you drop like two more things on everybody here coming yeah. up. I <laughs> yeah, because I, I, I've been focusing more and more on studio work. There might be a studio page that I have to start. Um, mm -hmm. And then certain projects related to the studio as well. So we'll, we'll see how it all goes. I got it. I, I feel like I'm, I'm literally like the dude strung out on, you know, on all the trees trying to hold on all these branches and seeing what works. But, but it's like, it's, it, it's, it's stressful, but it's a lot of fun. Like I say, cause I'm doing projects that I enjoy. And, and, uh, I mean, if one happens to really take off, I'll have to focus on that one in particular. But in the meantime, like it's, it's cool to be able to kind of jump from one thing to the other. And it, right. I, I did, I had a conversation with, uh, with Joey and Blake from devour the day in Egypt oh, yeah. central, like, like a month or two ago and it was like this common thread of, of, of like you know yes i'm doing this but i also like to do this and it's like, and then we had this realization of like i just like to wake up in the morning and know that i'm going to be doing something creative like that's what mm -hmm. what inspires me to get through the day is like i'm gonna i'm gonna do something creative today i'm not quite sure what it is but that's that's what we're gonna do and uh it, it, and it's like it, it could be a live performance it could be a recording it could be art it could be you know designing something it could be you know so a, a friend of mine hit me up going hey man I want to get this shirt done can you design it for me and I didn't know that morning I was going to be doing that but by midnight you know I'm getting the design sorted out for this deal. Like, and and it's that's what's cool about diversifying and, and all that kind of stuff it's like we just like to be creative and move stuff forward and and I've had a lot of parallels with those guys in in both my music career and stuff outside of it. So every time I talk with them, it's 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 comforting into a certain sense. We're like, yeah, that's that's also the road that I'm on <laughs> right now. <laughs> those are good dudes, man. Well, yeah. Corky, I appreciate the time so much, man. Stay on the horn with me. We're gonna wrap up here. Thanks for checking out the Styles Cast with Corky G. Thanks and so much for the time, Wes. Thank you, brother. And make sure you guys go and check out Code Red Right, No Accident, the brand new single. Out now.